Act Three of the Tragedy of Macbeth by William Shakespeare. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Three, Scene One, Forest, the Palace. Enter Banquo. Thou hast it now, King Cordor glance all as the weird women promised and i fear thou pleads most foully for it yet it was said it should not stand in thy posterity but that myself should be the root and father of many kings if there come truth from them as upon thee macbeth their speeches shine why by the verities on thee made good may they not be my oracles as well and set me up in hope but hush no more senate sounded enter macbeth as king lady macbeth as queen lennox ross lords ladies and attendants here's our chief guest if he had been forgotten it had been as a gap in our great feast and all thing unbecoming to-night we hold a solemn supper sir and i'll request your presence let your highness command upon me to the which my duties are with a most indissoluble tie for ever knit ride you this afternoon ay my good lord we should have else desired your good advice which still hath been both grave and prosperous in this day's council but we'll take to-morrow is't far you ride as far my lord as will fill up the time twixt this and supper go not my horse the better i must become a borrower of the night for a dark hour or twain fail not our feast my lord i will not we hear our bloody cousins are bestowed in england and in ireland not confessing their cruel parricide filling their hearers with strange invention but of that to-morrow when therewithal we shall have cause of state craving us jointly hie to your horse adieu till you return at night goes fleance with you ay my good lord our time does call upon us i wish your horse is swift and sure of foot and so i do commend you to their backs farewell exit banquo let every man be master of his time till seven at night to make society the sweeter welcome we will keep ourselves till supper time alone while then god be with you exeunt all but macbeth and an attendant sirrah a word with you attend those men our pleasure they are my lord without the palace gate bring them before us exit attendant to be thus is nothing but to be safely thus our fears in banquo stick deep and in his royalty of nature reigns that which would be feared tis much he dares and to that dauntless temper of his mind he hath a wisdom that doth guide his valour to act in safety there is none but he whose being i do fear and under him my genius is rebuked as it is said mark antony's was by caesar he chid the sisters when they first put the name of king upon me and bade them speak to him then prophet-like they hailed him father to a line of kings upon my head they placed a fruitless crown and put a barren sceptre in my gripe thence to be wrenched with an unlineal hand no son of mine succeeding if t be so for banquo's issue have i filed my mind for them the gracious duncan have i murdered put rancours in the vessel of my peace only for them and mine eternal jewel given to the common enemy of man to make them kings the seed of banquo kings rather than so come fate into the list and champion me to the utterance who's there re-enter attendant with two murderers now go to the door and stay there till we call exit attendant was it not yesterday we spoke together it was so please your highness well then now have you considered of my speeches 
know that it was he in the times past which held you so under fortune which you thought had been our innocent self this i made good to you in our last conference passed in probation with you how you were borne in hand how crossed the instruments who wrought with them and all things else that might to half a soul and to a notion craze say thus did banquo you made it known to us i did so and went further which is now our point of second meeting do you find your patience so predominant in your nature that you can let this go are you so gospel to pray for this good man and for his issue whose heavy hand hath bowed you to the grave and beggared yours for ever we are men my liege ay in the catalogue ye go for men as hounds and greyhounds mongrels spaniels curs shuffs water rugs and demi wolves are clept all by the name of dogs the valued file distinguishes the swift the slow the subtle the housekeeper the hunter every one according to the gift which bounteous nature hath in him closed whereby he does receive particular addition from the bill that writes them all alike and so of men now if you have a station in the file not in the worst rank of manhood say it and i will put that business in your bosoms whose execution takes your enemy off grapples you to the heart and love of us who wear our health but sickly in his life which in his death were perfect i am one my liege whom the vile blues and buffets of the world have so incensed that i am reckless what i do to spite the world and i another so weary with disasters tugged with fortune that i would set my life on any chance to mend it or be rid on both of you know banquo was your enemy true my lord so he is mine and in such bloody distance that every minute of his being thrusts against my nearest of life and though i could with barefaced power sweep him from my sight and bid my will avouch it yet i must not for certain friends that are both his and mine whose loves i may not drop but wail his fall who i myself struck down and thence it is that i to your assistance do make love masking the business from the common eye for sundry weighty reasons we shall my lord perform what you command us though our lives your spirits shine through you within this hour at most i will advise you where to plant yourselves acquaint you with the perfect spy of the time the moment on't for it must be done to-night and something from the palace always thought that i require a clearness and with him to leave no rubs nor botches in the work fleance his son that keeps him company whose absence is no less material to me than is his father's must embrace the fate of that dark hour resolve yourselves apart i'll come to you anon we are resolved my lord i'll call upon you straight abide within exeunt murderers it is concluded banquo thy soul's flight if it find heaven must find it out to-night exit act three scene two the palace enter lady macbeth and a servant is banco gone from court ay madam but returns again to-night say to the king i would attend his leisure for a few words madam i will exit nought's had all's spent where our desire is got without content tis safer to be that which we destroy than by destruction dwell in doubtful joy enter macbeth how now my lord why do you keep alone of sorriest fancies your companions making using those thoughts which should indeed have died with them they think on things without all remedy should be without regard what's done is done we have scotched the snake not killed it she'll close and be herself whilst our poor malice remains in danger of her former tooth but let the frame of things disjoint both the worlds suffer 
ere we will eat our meal in fear and sleep in the affliction of these terrible dreams that shake us nightly better be with the dead whom we to gain our peace have sent to peace than on the torture of the mind to lie in restless ecstasy duncan is in his grave after life's fitful fever he sleeps well treason has done his worst nor steel nor poison malice domestic foreign levy nothing can touch him further come on gentle my lord sleek o'er your rugged looks be bright and jovial among your guests to-night so shall i love and so i pray be you let your remembrance apply to banquo present him eminence both with eye and tongue unsafe the while that we must lave our honours in these flattering streams and make our faces visards to our hearts disguising what they are you must leave this oh full of scorpions is my mind dear wife thou know'st that banquo and his fleance lives but in them nature's copies not etern there's comfort yet they are assailable then be thou jocund ere the bat hath flown his cloistered flight ere to black hecate's summons the shard-born beetle with his drowsy hums hath rung night's yawning peal there shall be done a deed of dreadful note what's to be done be innocent of the knowledge dearest chuck till thou applaud the deed come sealing night scarf up the tender eye of pitiful day and with thy bloody and invisible hand cancel and tear to pieces that great bond which keeps me pale light thickens and the crow makes wing to the rocky wood good things of day begin to droop and drowse while night's black agents to their praise do rouse thou marvellest at my words but hold thee still things bad begun make strong themselves by ill so prithee go with me Exeunt. Act three, scene three. A park near the palace. Enter three murderers. But who did bid thee join with us? Macbeth. He needs not our mistrust, since he delivers our offices and what we have to do to the direction just. Oh, then stand with us. Oh, the west yet glimmers with some streaks of day now spurs the lated traveller apace to gain the timely inn and near approaches the subject of our watch hark i hear horses within give us a light there ho then this he the rest that are within the note of expectation already are in the court his horses go about almost a mile but he does usually, so all men do, from hence to the palace gate, make it their walk. A light, a light. Enter Banquo and Fleance with a torch. Tis he. Stand to it. It will be rain to-night. Let it come down. They set upon Banquo. O oh, treachery! Fly, good Fleance, fly, fly, fly. Thou mayst revenge. O oh, slave! Dies. Fleance escapes. Who did strike out the light? Was not the way. There's but one down. The sun has fled. We have lost best half of our affair. Well, let's away, and say how much is done. Exeunt. Act three, scene four. The same, a hall in the palace. A banquet prepared. Enter Macbeth, Lady Macbeth, Ross, Lennox, Lords, and attendants. You know your own degrees. Sit down. At first and last the hearty welcome. Thanks to your majesty. Ourself will mingle with society and play the humble host. Our hostess keeps her state, but in best time we will require her welcome. Pronounce it for me, sir, to all our friends for my heart speaks they are welcome first murderer appears at the door see 
they encounter thee with their hearts thanks both sides are even here i'll sit i the midst be large in mirth anon we'll drink a measure the table round approaching the door there's blood on thy face <sighs> tis banquo's then tis better thee without than he within is he dispatched my lord his throat is cut that i did for him thou art the best of the cut throats yet he's good that did the like for fleance if thou didst it thou art the non pareil most royal sir fleance is scaped then comes my fit again i had else been perfect whole as the marble founded as the rock as broad and general as the casing air but now i am cabined cribbed confined bound in to saucy doubts and fears but banquo's safe ay my good lord safe in a ditch he bides with twenty trenchard gashes on his head the least a death to nature thanks for that there the grown serpent lies the worm that's fled hath nature that in time will venom breed no teeth for the present get thee gone to-morrow we'll hear ourselves again exit murderer my royal lord you do not give the cheer the feast is sold that is not often vouched while tis a making tis given with welcome to feed were best at home from thence the sauce to meet is ceremony meeting were bare without it sweet remembrancer now good digestion waits on appetite and health on both may it please your highness sit the ghost of banquo enters and sits in macbeth's place here had we now our country's honour roofed with the grace presence of our banquo present who may i rather challenge for unkindness than pity for mischance his absence sir lays blame upon his promise pleased your highness to grace us with your royal company the table's full here is a place reserved sir where here my good lord what is it that moves your highness which of you have done this what my good lord thou canst not say i did it never shake thy gory locks at me gentlemen rise his highness is not well sit worthy friends my lord is often thus and hath been from his youth pray you keep seat the fit is momentary upon a thought he will again be well if much you note him you shall offend him and extend his passion feed and regard him not are you a man ay and a bold one that dare look on that which might appall the devil o oh, proper stuff this is the very painting of your fear this is the air-drawn dagger which you said led you to duncan oh these flaws and starts impostors to true fear would well become a woman's story at a winter's fire authorized by her grandam shame itself why do you make such faces when all's done you look but on a stool prithee see there behold look lo how say you why what care i if thou canst nod speak too if charnel houses and our graves must send those that we bury back our monuments shall be the moors of kites ghost of banquo vanishes what quite unmanned in folly if i stand here i saw him fie for shame blood hath been shed ere now if the golden time ere human statute purged the gentle wheel ay and since too murders have been performed too terrible for the ear the times have been that when the brains were out the man would die and there an end but now they rise again with twenty mortal murders on their crowns and push us from our stools this is more strange than such a murder is my worthy lord your noble friends do lack you i do forget do not muse at me my most worthy friends i have a strange infirmity
which is nothing to those that know me. Come, love and health to all. Then I'll sit down. Give me some wine. Fill full. I drink to the general joy of the whole table, and to our dear friend Banquo, whom we miss. Would he were here. To all and him we thirst, and all to all. Our duties and the pledge. Re-enter Ghost of Banquo. Avaunt, and quit my sight. Let the earth hide thee. Thy bones are marrowless, thy blood is cold. Thou hast no speculation in those eyes which thou dost glare with. Think of this, good peers, but as a thing of custom. Tis no other. Only it spoils the pleasure of the time. What man dare, I dare. Approach thou like the rugged Russian bear, the armed rhinoceros, or the herc and tiger. Take any shape but that, and my firm nerves shall never tremble or be alive again, and dare me to the desert with thy sword. If trembling I inhabit then, protest me the baby of a girl. Hence, horrible shadow, unreal mockery, hence! Ghost of Banquo vanishes. Why, so, being gone, I am a man again. Pray you, sit still. You have displaced the mirth, broke the good meeting with most admired disorder. Can such things be, and overcome us like a summer's cloud, without our special wonder? You make me strange even to the disposition that I owe, when now I think you can behold such sights, and keep the natural ruby of your cheeks, when mine is blanched with fear. What sights, my lord? I pray you speak not. He grows worse and worse. Question enrages him. At once, good night. Stand not upon the order of your going, but go at once. Good night, and better health attend his majesty. A kind good night to all. Exeunt all but Macbeth and Lady Macbeth. It will have blood. They say blood will have blood. Stones have been known to move, and trees to speak. Augurs and understood relations have by maggot pies and chuffs and rucks brought forth the secretest man of blood. What is the night? Almost at odds with morning, which is which. How sayst thou, that Macduff denies his person at our great bidding? Did you send to him, sir? I hear it by the way, but I will send. There's not a one of them but in his house I keep a servant feed. I will to-morrow, and betimes I will, to the weird sisters. More shall they speak, for now I am bent to know by the worst means the worst. For mine own good, all causes shall give way. I am in blood, stepped in so far, that should I wade no more, returning were as tedious as to go o'er. Strange things I have in head, that will to hand, which must be acted, ere they may be scanned. You lack the season of all natures. Sleep. Come, we'll to sleep. My strange and self-abuse is the initiate fear that wants hard use. We are yet but young indeed. Exeunt Act Three, Scene Five, A Heath Thunder, enter the three witches meeting Hecate. Why, how now, Hecate, you look angrily. Have I not reason, beldames as you are, saucy and overbold? How did you dare to trade and traffic with Macbeth in riddles and affairs of death? And I, the mistress of your charms, the close contriver of all harms, was never called to bear my part or show the glory of our art. And, which is worse, all you have done hath been for but a wayward son, spiteful and wrathful, who, as others do, loves for his own ends, not for you. But make amends now, get you gone. And at the pit of Acheron meet me in the morning, thither he will come to know his destiny. Your vessels and your spells provide, your charms and everything beside. 
I am for the air, this night I'll spend unto a dismal and a fatal end. Great business must be wrought ere noon. Upon the corner of the moon there hangs a vaporous drop profound. I'll catch it ere it come to ground. And that distilled by magic slights shall raise such artificial sprites as by the strength of their illusion shall draw him on to his confusion. He shall spurn fate, scorn death, bear, he hopes, above wisdom, grace, and fear. And you all know security is mortal's chiefest enemy. Music and a song within, come away, come away, etc. Hark, I am called, my little spirit, see, sits in a foggy cloud and stays for me. Exit. Come, let's make haste, she'll soon be back again. Exeunt. Act Three, Scene Six. Forest, the palace. Enter Lennox and another lord. My former speeches have but hit your thoughts, which can interpret further. Only, I say, things have been strangely born. The gracious Duncan was pitied of Macbeth. Marry, he was dead. And the right valiant Banquo walked late too, whom, you may say, if it please you, Flayance killed, for Flayance fled. Men must not walk too late. Who cannot want the thought how monstrous it was for Malcolm and Donalbane to kill their gracious father? Damned fact. How it did grieve Macbeth. Did he not straight in pious rage the two delinquents tear that were the slaves of drink and thralls of sleep? Was that not nobly done? Aye, and wisely too. For it would have angered any heart alive to hear the men deny it. So that I say he has borne all things well, and I do think that had he Duncan's sons under his key, as an it please heaven, he shall not, they should find what twere to kill a father. So should Flyance. But peace, for from broad words and cause he failed his presence at the tyrant's feast. I hear Macduff lives in disgrace. Sir, can you tell where he bestows himself? The son of Duncan, from whom this tyrant holds the due of birth, lives in the English court, and is received of the most pious Edward with such grace that the malevolence of fortune nothing takes from his high respect. Thither Macduff is going to pray the holy king upon his aid to wake Northumberland and warlike seaward, that by the help of these, with him above to ratify the work, we may again give to our tables meat sleep to our nights free from our feasts and banquets bloody knives do faithful homage and receive free honours all which we pine for now and this report hath so exasperate the king that he prepares for some attempt of war sent he to macduff he did and with an absolute sir not i the cloudy messenger turns me his back and hums as who should say, you'll rue the time that clogs me with his answer. And that well might advise him to a caution, to hold what distance his wisdom can provide. Some holy angel fly to the court of England, and unfold his message ere he come, that a swift blessing may soon return to this, our suffering country, under the hand accursed. I'll send my prayers with him. Exeunt. End of Act Three